Alright, hey guys, Basil Wolf with Grayson Hobby, and we're going to do something a little different this week. Um, it's close to Christmas, and this video will be obsolete next month anyway. So we're going to go over some of the top questions we get uh, for the Jumper Radio, because that's the, uh, the lot of videos going out there, but we're going to squash a lot of rumors we have. Not really rumors, but more so updates since, I guess, last week. We'll pick updates from before, prior. So it seems like weekly we're getting updates with this guy. Yeah. Um, so what's the question that you want to relay the to the world? The number one question. Okay. The number one question is, more specifically, the email per verbatim is, I want to buy a jumper T16. Does yours have OpenTX and bootloader installed? The answer is yes. The radios, everyone we've gotten with it, OpenTX, when we announced it uh, about a month or two, probably almost two months ago now, that we said, hey guys, they're now including OpenTX. Those all had bootloaders. They had internal modules, they had bootloaders. Anything we sell now has a bootloader on it. Does that make sense? What is bootloader? Bootloader is literally just a pre-programmed part of the internal module, okay. in this case, that allows you to flash it through the SD card to right. update it. Perfect, so it's an easy tool or software package to update your... It's an installer thing, yeah. yeah. All right, um, so does it have bootloader? All the radios we have have bootloader. It's been like that since we had OpenTX. So right. if you got a jumper TX that had OpenTX natively flashed on it, then yes, you have bootloader. All right, and everything we will have will have bootloader. Yes, everything we carry has bootloader. You scared me first. Yeah, I, sorry, okay. I just literally didn't know you actually asked that question. Okay. Yes. All right, and even so, if you have a need for an internal module for whatever reason, even these guys now. Yeah, if have you have the older firmware. Uh, and no bootloader on your internal module and you want to update to it and you just cannot figure out with the various uh, tutorials we actually even have linked on our website on how to update if you can't do it and you or you just don't want to do it it's thirty dollars new module right. it has a bootloader on it other reviewers that you're finding got early adopters of the jumper like um, before us really yeah, I mean they were they were like very early. They didn't have the Hall effect sensors, and they mm -hmm. got that internal module update on that, so they didn't have the bootloader. Um, so it's almost you know it's one of those things. Yes, for them it, it applies, but if you're looking to get one now, um, it, it's already got that stuff on it, right. so it's not a, not an issue. Okay, um, and that's been like that for the last you know Months, month or so. Yeah. So if you bought one early November from us, kind of thing. Now, granted, there's other vendors that might have old inventory. I don't know, um, but, but anything it, from us, we can guarantee has bootloader. Now the million dollar question is, is do I have to have a bootloader if I don't have one? If you want to update the OpenTX and all that, then in order to use all the features, yes. Okay. There's, if you have DSMX, if you're using DSMX and you have older firmware, you may have issues with some telemetry okay. receivers. So yes, I would recommend updating the firmware whether or not you have a bootloader. All right. And I just learned this tonight. Um, there's two bootloaders. There's actually two bootloaders. Okay. That I was, I, I always heard bootloader and I just assumed it was the internal. Module. One is specifically for updating OpenTX, Jumper TX, etc. Every radio always came radio. with that. that. So everyone had t Open yeah. t uh, j uh, bootloader, correct? Yes. Okay, so that one's that's just to get your OpenTX. You may have campaign. to change your bootloader from Jumper TX to OpenTX. For those of you who have the old Jumper firmware, okay. um, it's just flashing the All firmware. Right. Now, the, this one is, this is running your software, your OpenTX. Yes. And this one is going to run your... Multi-module. Yes, okay. which has its own, because this was a whole standalone system that they used right. into it. Um, if you have the internal module and you go into your firmware where you select your model memory and the version says 1.2.1.51, then you don't have a bootloader. Okay. So if it's that or older, you don't have it. If it's 1.2.1.85 is your version, you have a bootloader. Um, most of the radios we got I believe were actually had bootloader um, at least the month or so prior to OpenTX coming out and after obviously had bootloader. Uh, some of the really early ones actually had the external modules so there was very few that had internal module and jumper TX that might not have a bootloader. Um, for those of you who have that we have a link below on the directions on how to do it to update it through a little uh, USB card you can get one for under five bucks. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that do have OpenTX flashed on it or the 0.85 or higher firmware, then it's just a matter of loading the file onto SD card and flashing it through the through the menus. All right. So hopefully that is very clear. We try to make it as clear as possible. Yeah. It, it has bootloader. 
the new versions, like Will said earlier, the early reviewers from the versions that were first released in May. Yeah, a lot of the reviewers actually had early editions, so they didn't have the bootloader. Yeah. Uh, my radio didn't come with a bootloader either. Mine didn't yours. even come with Hall gimbals. Yeah, so yours didn't have the Hall we gimbals. We put the Hall gimbals, gimbals and we did. Yeah, um, so. so it's one of those things. There are upgrades and all that um, you can do. It's not hard. There's tutorials for almost everything on this. We'll link the best ones that we've seen yeah. on our site. And everything's plug page. and play in this in this, this radio. Yeah, so it's, it's it's been really, really easy. Yeah. Um, biggest thing is, guys, don't try to overthink it. Just go in, open mind it. Open TX, open minded, um, <laughs> and it's really not bad. Don't try to force it to go to a different way based on what you're thinking. Just, yeah. just follow it. Just go with the flow. Yeah, you know, you'll be good. At the very end of the video, we're gonna put uh, about a two, three minute video. Yeah, I'm gonna do a quick little video just showing the basic idea, so you guys can get a get grasp of what it entails as far as updating. It's not a step by step because, the like we tutorial. said, we're gonna post links to ones we found that are really good tutorials yeah. posted by. Uh, users either on Facebook or RC groups, etc., that have made beautiful tutorials on how to do it step by step. Um, very good wording. Um, but I'm gonna just show you a quick little rough of the actual flashing to, so you can kind of understand or know what to expect on the actual what to see on the jumper while it's yeah. flashing. That's mainly what I wanna show you. You gotta say at the very end because we're gonna bore half the people. Yeah, we're gonna put that at the very end of the video. Yeah. So after our closing and all that, for those of you that wanna stick around and kind of get an idea of what it is, we'll leave that raw content from one of our other takes. Yeah. <laughs> Next question we get all the time in the comments and email is, does jumper radio work with fill in your blank protocol? And, and that's another, that whole thing we have a list, gracenobby.com backslash yes. jumper, I believe. It'd be Yes, and the link will take you actually to the GitHub page. Yes, which that's takes where you, you get the files. The official. So we could tell you yes or no, but that's not the official. The official is in the GitHub page, and that will tell you everything you need to know. It's a pretty extensive list. And the great thing about it, though, guys, it's constantly expanding. So um, if it's not already on there, there's actually a little issues and support thing. You can actually put in request for that particular protocol, and there's guys that are working on that. So that's really cool. I mean, it's open source in that regard to where it's constantly being updated. Um, they just added a couple uh, protocols that didn't exist two weeks ago already on it. And it's literally just a matter of updating the SD card. Yes. So the official list, it will link it below. It's on the GitHub page. So hopefully, we don't really want to answer those because we don't want to say yes and then two weeks later it's gone for some reason it's probably not going to disappear but it's going to be more added as yeah. the time goes on because now with the jumper using the multi-module it's blown up that multi-module exponentially i mean they've used it on other radios for a couple years now okay but now that there's so many people getting into it with the jumper being so popular mm -hmm. i think it's I, i'm seeing more rapid firmware updates right. and all that um because the guys are developing right next one we get is hey i want to use it for this protocol but there's a bug how do I know the bug is fixed? Where can we tell people to go? It's on the GitHub page. <laughs> Literally, when you go to collect, collect the, uh, if you use, look at your firmware, you can actually see what they fixed, what they haven't, and you can also see the issues tab to where people have reported, I have problems with this, this, and this. Um, older firmware, if you're running DSMX, there was a glitch with it, um, mainly to where it was reporting low RSSI and dropouts with the, some of the newer telemetry receivers. Um, that's where you want to download the newer firmware yeah. if you have that. Um, and that's counting like some of the, um, the bind and fly stuff from Horizon basically. Okay. Speaking of which, let's say I'm flying my, I fly my airplane quad, whatever, and it's doing great and the new firmware drops. Do I need to update? As far as OpenTX, not really. I mean, you're getting new fer fe features and all that. Mm -hmm. The internal module, um, I'm a firm believer if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I still have beta flight 3.1 okay. on half my quads. So, so. The, I guess that it would really be dependent on you. If you have a particular, if you could look at the GitHub and say, oh, my problem is blah. This applies to me, then Then yes. you update. And if you're having a great old time, you're flying a, a, a jumper R1 receiver and you're going out very far or with a, with a spotter and you have no problems, Hey, don't, like you will said, don't. Yeah, um, don't basically, if you update the newest OpenTX though, it will ask that, or it will recommend you update the firmware the re on the internal multi-module. The reason why it's doing that, and also the external module if you have older firmware, mm -hmm. because there's a couple of features that are unlocked with newer firmware. They've worked side by side kind of thing to unlock some features that it's not, it won't recognize those features, it won't work unless you update the module. Okay. That's more like the RSSI, um, on the module when you go to tune the multi-module and all that. It's just little things like that add up and it makes a better experience overall. And realistically, if you have the bootloader flashed already on your radio, I don't see why not. Now, I wouldn't jump to 
download one that's been out for 12 hours kind of thing, but if it's been out a week and nobody's reporting issues yeah. and it's a stable platform, go for it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have the latest and greatest firmware. Um, chances are, I mean, it's one of those things, let it go for a week or two before you do it, unless there is a known bug that they've squashed and fixed right then and there, and they say, this is how we fix this, like the DSMX bug. Yeah. Um, that is where I would just download the newest firmware and try it. Okay. Um, would I go go out and fly my $2,000 uh, quarter scale plane with it after I flashed it? No, probably not. I'd probably go take my $50 foamy that's got a little- $50, portfolio. you're rich. If I fly uh, like a $10 foamy. Yeah, I would probably take one of my <laughs> uh, beat up old planes, fly it out there, make sure it's good. Yeah. Um, just before I put one in the air because it is open source. Right. Another question, the last, at least the last one for today will be batteries. People want to put LiPo batteries in there. They want to know what size will fit, if it, if a LiPo battery can be used. And here's my, my thought, is the 18650s, depending on where you go, can be anywhere from five to 20 bucks by four. And then keep two charge and then you're done. You and the simple worry. fact is they're, you know, a, a decent, 18650, they're generally 22,000 to 3,000 milliamp all day long, realistically. And that's better than the most of the LiPos that are fitting in there. Yeah, because uh, the I, best I, I've seen is like a 3,000 LiPo that fits in there, but it's super low discharge. The cells, I've heard, already heard people having issues with them kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then there's also ones that they're reporting that are online. Uh, there's a, a green battery that's going around like on Amazon, and guys are saying after they charge them up, they're only getting 1,100 milliamps, which makes sense because if you That's look at the dimensions, size. it's oh, the same shit. as a Gen's Ace 1,100 milliamp pack. So you can stick so it. So it's probably the same battery. All you right. can throw whatever label you want on it, but at the end of the day, what the charge capacity is all that matters. And physics does matter in terms of size. You can't say, oh, look, I fit a 12,000 milliamp battery in my battery tray. That's funny because I can only fit 1,100. Yeah. The other question that always comes up is, how do I charge my batteries? Um, guys, literally the easiest thing to do is Google the closest vape shop to you. Um, you can literally... You don't have to vape. You don't have to vape, <laughs> but vape shops, anybody that sells high power flashlights, a lot of electronic stores and all that, um, are selling like Best Buy and all that. They have 18650 chargers because these batteries are used in laptops. They're used in um, high power flashlights they're using the vapes most commonly um so places that sell that kind of stuff chances are they have them but uh, even what, walmart has them I what think nowadays. i don't but i don't want to do that i already have a charger how do i well that's the thing if you are if you are dead set on using your hobby grade charger you have to make an adapter to, to break out the balance lead to that unless you have a charger that's capable of charging only on the balance lead which happens to be the super cheap little Crappy chargers that came with all your radio flies, you know, the ones that take uh, 10 years to charge a 2,000 milliamp LiPo? Yeah, and you, those You literally it. plug the <laughs> balance, lead, balance only. lead into the charger and you're done. Yeah, in order to charge off the factory harness, you need a charger that charges through the balance lead only. Um, is there hack modules that you can get online that guys are making to where you can charge them externally? Yes, they are out there. Um, I would not personally hack up my radio because my radio flies my stuff. Well, it's just drilling the case, and the case is, what, 12 bucks? So it's not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan of here, putting drills next to them. Here's the one thing, guys. This radio, at the end of the day, it's 160 bucks. I'm way more comfortable modifying this, um, especially like the physical aspects of it, taking switches off and all that, than I would be digging in a DX9 that's $500. Or so, an IX20 that's $1,100 or $1,200. Or more, yeah. yes. All right, guys, we've been on long enough. Um, hopefully, we hit the hot topics for your questions. Um, Hit us below with anything you need. And by this time, everybody's pretty much done. Yeah. yeah. So, so according to the stats, most people watch only four minutes. Yeah. So we <laughs> rambled for seven. What are we doing? All right. So this is what I was talking about as far as to find out, one, what version of the bootloader you have, and okay. two, how to update it if All you right. already have it. Go. So real quick, um, we're going to go to the model here. Hold on. Let me focus. I'm going to select, go. select right. my model, and I'm going to scroll until I get to my multi-module, the internal RF or external, depending on which one you have. Um, so I'm in, this one has an internal, so I'm gonna go there, um, set something up, you know, you gotta have it enabled, so if it's disabled like that, you have to turn it on. So let's turn it on. And there you go, once you turn it on, and this one tells me I have version 1.3.0.45, and this one happens to be Aileron, elevated throttle rudder. That's the channel mapping, okay? Um, so that's an updated version. I did update this one and with the SD card because um, it had 1.2.1.85 when I first got it. So does it have a bootloader? This had a bootloader. Uh, that, no, so it this does. is okay. this was an OpenTX native radio, okay? okay? 
So this one right here um, has OpenTX. So if I want to update the firmware, mm -hmm. I hold the system button. I go to the main menu, hold the system. I'm in radio setup, mm -hmm. and I'm going to press page one time. And this is the this is basically what's on your SD card if you on your computer. Mm -hmm. Um, the firmware file and right here you'll see all these here. Mm -hmm. This is just a whole bunch of different ones that I've had loaded on here. The original one, this is what my radio originally had on it. Multi STM, OpenTX, AETR, no inversion, which because it's internal. If you have external, it'd be inverted. Version 1.2.1.85. Okay, that's what was originally on my radio. I download it from the GitHub page, the 4.4 and then the four or five. Now, what you'll see here is I got a couple different ones. The reason why I have different ones on here, if you look at the channel mapping is different. This is only because I was playing with different channel mappings. Um, if you guys just want to update your module, you don't want to do anything from the factory default, what you, what you want to use is the AETR, okay? So, for instance, I'm going to go here. This one's four or five. I'm going to go ahead and hold it, and then flash. Hold, it. hold the roller. Hold the roller, push it in, hold it. Flash internal multi, and then you'll see it goes into the bootloader. It says device reset, and then it writes it. But wait, your module, your models. It doesn't matter. You might have to rebind yeah. if, depending on if they change the protocol. Right. But I thought I would scare you. No, this is the did it, store. Did it work? I didn't know. I didn't mine's right here. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, shit. Um, all right, so pay attention there. Wait, so wait. If it gives you an error or warning or fail, that means you don't have bootloader on it. And that's the case what you'll find is you have version 1.2.1.51 and then you'll see flash successful. Hold on, let me read that. Hold on, don't move it. Let's just focus. Okay. So once you do that, and that's all there is to it. Now, if I want to update the firmware on this, I don't think this one has the firmware, but let's see. You would hold these two buttons in, turn it on. And again, you do have to hook the jumper in or take the SD card out and you'll have to save the firmware from the computer to the the SD card, either through the USB port here or take the SD card out completely. I recommend doing it through the top instead of taking the SD card in and out. Um, I can go to write firmware. Okay, this particular radio does not have, I do not have it saved on there. So unfortunately you'd find it there. Let me see if this one has it. And just to show you guys, I'm gonna connect here. This is not necessarily a tutorial, but I wanna show you as far as what to look for on the screen. So let me go ahead and load this right here. Um, on my desktop, I have saved a OpenTX file um, with RC Candidate 2.3. And I got this through the OpenTX companion, um, but I did save it to my computer. So let me take this. Ooh. And you're hooked up to your USB I'm, port yeah. on top. I'm just going to copy the file. Okay. And I'm going to go into my removable drive. That's It's going to come up with a T16 as one drive and removable drive as the other If it's long, once you select storage. Okay. I'm going to go into my firmware folder, okay. and I'm going to paste it in. And this is just one of the ways to do it. So you're taking the file now off the computer and directly putting it onto the SD yeah, card, which is inside. There's, the there's two different ways to do it. You can also do it through mm -hmm. OpenTX by... Well, just do one way so we don't confuse everybody. Right firmware to radio. Yeah. That's that. That's okay. the same thing, but I just got the file itself. All right, so now it's on our radio. So now it's on my radio. TV. I'm going to show you. Let's go back over here. I'm going to check here. I'm going to go over my firmware. I have the firmware, the OpenTX file on it. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the thing. I'm going to hold the two trim buttons, T4 and T1, in, inwards. Go to write firmware. And then I'm going to go to the OpenTX file. Hit select. And then I got selected. I'm going to hold enter to flash. And this is updating it right here. So this is real time, guys, from the first video. It took a, a, you know, a minute or two to update. This is, um, yeah. That's not, not movie magic. So that's that. Um, now, you might have to update your SD card file. This one was already updated. Um, it'll tell you what version you need. And yeah, so. All right, that's it. And that's it. So you may have to update your SD card, which is also on the OpenTX uh, site. We'll have links on our site too. Um, I'll go ahead and have a pre-compile like what I put on here. We'll go ahead and have that listed on our site to where you can download that if you can't figure out the companion part, but you will have to flash it turned off if you don't have OpenTX bootloader. Okay.